it's the M1 Max MacBook Pro, 64 gigs of RAM. This is the M2 Pro, and it's significantly less expensive than this one. 12 core CPU and 19 core GPU and 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. If you go with the machine with this configuration, you're saving more than a thousand dollars. In compilations like we're about to do, we're using multiple cores. And this one happens to have two more cores than this one. This kind of test is very important to you, whether you're using Xcode directly to write your iOS apps, or whether you're using any of the cross-platform frameworks like Ionic, NativeScript, React Native, Flutter. All those are working on the Xcode toolchain, so this is important. Now for Android specifically, and that side of cross-platform, I will be doing videos on that separately, so keep an eye out for those. But we're not gonna run the benchmark just the way it is. I'm gonna add a little bit something to it. So here's benchmark.sh. By the way, if you are interested in this code, I'll link to the code down below. This was created by Maxi Remenka, and it's a nice little benchmark that uh, includes a lot of dependencies, a lot of extra Cocoa Pods and libraries that are built, and that's why it takes a long time to build. Not that long, but it's pretty intensive. All right, right here where we're done with the test and we're reporting the results, I'm just gonna add, say, M1 Max terminated. And for this one, it's gonna be, say, M2 Pro terminated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we like to have a little fun on this channel, right? And this does not uh, affect any performance of the benchmark either. Now to run the benchmark, all we do is use the shell command and that benchmark script, benchmark.sh. I don't need the time command because the script itself is going to report the time at the end, but I do need something. Allow me to introduce to you Schwarzenegger 2.0. I had the build out video recently. If you haven't seen that, check it out. What this allows me to do is press the keys at the exact same time so that there there is no human error here anymore. It's now done by a machine, by a press of a button. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we like to have fun on this channel. And I also am fully aware that the time is reported at the end of the program. Let's go. <laughs> While this is running, I'm noticing something here. We are reaching pretty high temperatures here on the right side. M2 Pro terminated. M2 Pro finished first. Wow. But that kind of aligns with what I said about the number of cores. M1 Max terminated. M1 Max terminated. So we have a result here and there is a significant improvement in the speed in the M2 Pro. Check it out. 79 seconds for the M2 Pro and 94 seconds for the M1 Max. That is actually pretty significant. Now what I was saying about the temperatures is the M1 Max stayed nice and cool the whole time. The fans are constantly off. So that's not an issue at all. You can take a look at the break down of the efficiency core temperatures. There's two more efficiency cores. So clearly those are helping out here, even though they're not performance cores. And the M2 Pro temperatures were up in the orange. Given that they have more cores and they actually have been shown to draw more power, it makes sense why the temperatures would go up a little bit. Apple decided that they will allow that tolerance for the second generation of the Pro model chips. I do want to run this one more time and take a look at what's going on as far as power usage. So I'm going to activate those two and let's have a look at uh, Azitop, which is a Python program that lives on top of power metrics. You can download it. I actually leave a link down below for you. So here we got the Apple M1 max GPU usage, 13%, 14%. And this one is using 1%. Interesting. Both CPUs are being used at uh, close to full. Down here, we've got the wattage. CPUs are about 11 to 17 watts on the M1 max, up to 33 watts on the M2 Pro. Oh, interesting. And you, of course, you can take a look at the average number here and the peak numbers. The average is quite higher on the M2 Pro. Neither machine is throttling. We just jumped into the orange on the M1 Max, uh, up to 98 degrees, and the fans just kicked off. And we've got uh, up to 99 degrees over here on the M1 Max. Well, now we're up to 100, and we're up to 102 to 104. The tolerance is much higher for higher temperatures on the M2 Pro. And the fan, I've turned on the fan here here so we can see it it's a little bit higher on the m2 pro both of them are silent though you can't hear anything nope just to check the surface temperature here near the processor we're at 37 degrees on the m1 max and we're at 33 degrees on the m2 pro so a little bit cooler on the actual surface of the body that's interesting i guess that fan is working because the fan is over 2000 rpm over here and 1800 1900 rpm on the m1 max it's because i'm running this multiple times we'll probably see this in the next M2 test pro terminated 
Okay, that one finished first again. And where's your friend? M1 Max terminated. Predictable. And we've got pretty much the exact same times. Look at this. 74.5, just like last time, and 89 on the M1 Max. So we're really pretty consistent around those times. Now, let's move on to the next test, which is building WebKit. What's interesting about WebKit, it's a really huge build. There's even C code in there. Yeah, C++, C. So this will be a good collection of just code building, whether you're using C, C++, there's probably Swift in there, there's probably Objective-C in there. I can't guarantee that I haven't looked at the WebKit code base, but definitely a lot of stuff to build. By the way, if you like this video and if you like uh, this kind of content, I would appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Okay, Schwarzenegger is ready. By the way, I am including the time command this time because I don't remember if this spits out the build time or not at the end. All right, I'm just running this script tools, scripts, build WebKit. Let's go. <laughs> Love that thing. The M2 Pro is off to a nice uh, fast start already. This one's a little bit behind already. Let's see what happens. This is going to take a while, so I'll be back. What is WebKit, by the way, in case you're wondering? It's Safari. So we're building our own copy of Safari, which is open source. Cool. See you in a bit. I just found something interesting. It's getting up to 104 degrees here on the M2 Pro. I've never seen temperatures like that on the M1 Max. They really allowed the uh, M2 Pro to get hot here. It's done. We have almost the exact same time. 19 minutes and 30 seconds on the M2 Pro and 19 minutes 31 seconds on the M1 Max. M1 Max doing pretty well against more cores but also it was a lot more expensive so if you're going to be doing development mobile development if you're building large projects i think you can actually save some money and buy the m2 pro macbook pro of course the configuration that i have is uh, what gave me these results i've got an m2 max machine so we'll see how much faster that's going to be because I'm expecting that to be faster, of course. But this is pretty good. And the M2 Maxes are mostly for people that are going to be doing a lot of uh, maybe game development, graphics work, video rendering, things like that. And perhaps some of those folks that are doing machine learning. I got some tests coming up on that stuff later on. So make sure you subscribed. If this was a fun test for you to watch, Schwarzenegger 2.0 would appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I mean, I'll be back. Yeah.